Welcome to Radiologist Headquarters. I'm Dr. Dan Koval, and this is Imaging of Hepatic Hemangioma, Pitfalls and Mimics, Part 1. So I'll give you a general introduction to hemangioma in this lecture, and then we'll talk about the three major contrast enhancement patterns on CT and MRI, and then also talk about some key non-contrast features on these modalities of hemangioma. And then I'll finish with ultrasound, and then we'll also talk about different pitfalls to avoid throughout this lecture. All right, so hemangiomas are the most common benign hepatic tumor. They're also known as cavernous hemangiomas, and it's just a mass of blood-filled spaces separated by fibrous septations, and it's lined by endothelium. They're more common in females, and they're usually asymptomatic. Uncommonly, though, if the hemangioma impresses upon the hepatic capsule, it can cause pain. Even less common, large hemangiomas may rupture and cause hemoperitoneum. And there's also a syndrome known as cassaback merritt syndrome that can rarely occur, where platelets will be trapped in the large hemangioma and then be destroyed, causing thrombocytopenia. All right, so how do hemangiomas look on CT scan? Well, starting with non-contrast images, hemangiomas tend to be hypodense to the liver parenchyma, but they'll usually be homogeneously isodense to the blood pool, meaning they're the same density as the non-contrast appearance of the IVC portal and hepatic veins. So on this uppermost image, we see a right hepatic hemangioma, and it's isodense to the hepatic veins here, as well as the inferior vena cava. This lowermost image shows another hemangioma, and it really blends in with the adjacent hepatic vasculature. You can see it's the same density again as the IVC and portal veins, hepatic veins. Cysts tend to be more hypodense than the blood pool, and metastases and malignant lesions are often more heterogeneous. But contrast is much more specific when it comes to hemangioma, and there are three major enhancement patterns. One thing to keep in mind, though, is that all of these patterns will tend to have persistent delayed enhancement. So on a delayed phase image, a hemangioma should still be enhancing. That's a key feature. Hemangioma should never wash out normally. So this pattern is the most common here, this peripheral nodular interrupted enhancement pattern with gradual centripetal progression to uniform enhancement. And so this is a hepatic arterial phase image. You can see that the portal vein's enhancing along with the hepatic artery but the hepatic veins are not enhancing yet. And there is this irregular interrupted peripheral nodular enhancement. Now, if we look at a later phase portal venous phase image, you can see that the hemangioma is starting to progressively enhance and coalesce, moving towards the center. So this is very specific for hemangioma. Here's another example of that peripheral nodular enhancement pattern. This is a hepatic arterial phase image, and on the portal venous phase image, you can start to see multiple hemangiomas that are enhancing a little bit differently, but all with peripheral nodularity that's progressing centrally, and then this delayed image shows that there's persistent enhancement. There's no washout, meaning that the lesions are not de-enhancing or becoming darker than the surrounding hepatic parenchyma. So the next enhancement pattern we tend to see with smaller lesions, usually less than one to two centimeters in size. And these hemangiomas can have immediate, uh, rapid uniform enhancement and are known as flash filling or capillary hemangiomas. So this image shows a early portal venous phase scan with a diffusely enhancing lesion there in the posterior right hepatic lobe, it's very hypervascular. This patient also had a tagged red blood cell SPECT scan, which is a nuclear medicine scan, and you can see that the lesion has uptake there in the right hepatic lobe. You can tell that this is a red blood cell scan because the spleen is also very avid, and so is the aorta there. And red blood cell scans have a high accuracy for the diagnosis of hemangiomas. They'll tend to show persistent delayed uptake, just like the persistent delayed enhancement we see on CT and also MRI. So the final pattern we tend to see with larger masses, and they can have a non-enhancing central scar. So this lesion up here, this is a hepatic arterial phase image showing a very large hemangioma starting to enhance with this peripheral nodularity. And you can see that that interrupted nodularity is starting to coalesce centrally. But even on the delayed phase, it doesn't fully enhance the center. We have this non-enhancing scar. Here's a different example. This is a large hemangioma in the left hepatic lobe. You can see again, it's isodense to the blood pool here. Notice though the scar is a little more hypodense relative to the surrounding hemangioma. And then on the hepatic arterial phase image, the aorta is brightly enhancing, and then we see this associated peripheral nodular puddling or interrupted enhancement, and it's gradually progressing centrally on the delayed phase image. But notice there are these areas of central scar that are not fully enhancing. And that's a typical pattern for large hemangiomas. So another thing to keep in mind, sometimes these scars might calcify. That's not specific for hemangioma. You can see that with other tumors, but you may occasionally see that with these large hemangiomas. Okay, let's move on to MRI. So MRI is actually the most sensitive and specific modality for the diagnosis of hemangioma. It actually has a specificity of 100% for differentiating from metastases. You don't get 100% in radiology very often, do you? <laughs> so on non-contrast imaging, hemangiomas tend to be hypo-intense to the liver parenchyma and iso-intense to the blood pool, similar to the 
isodensity of hemangiomas to the blood pool on a CT scan. So here's this hemangioma here in the right hepatic lobe. You can see it has the same density as this portal vein on this T1 fat suppressed image. On T2 weighted images though, hemangiomas have a very characteristic appearance where they're hyperintense to the liver. You can see their hemangioma here, hyperintense to the liver parenchyma, but more importantly, they're hyperintense to the spleen, which is a very classic feature for a typical hemangioma. And that hyperintensity is often pronounced on the T2 fat suppressed image like we have here, this very hyperintense homogeneous hemangioma, and it's hyperintense relative to the spleen. Also, it's fairly common for hemangiomas to have a slightly lobulated contour, as in this case. So usually the hemangioma T2 hyperintensity becomes even more pronounced on heavily T2 weighted images or images that have a longer TE, time to echo. And this is a different patient with a hemangioma in the right hepatic lobe. Note the lobulated contour and uniform T2 hyperintensity relative to the spleen. This is a same patient with a more heavily T2 weighted sequence with a longer TE and notice how this lesion is even more hyperintense than on the prior. That's characteristic for hemangiomas. And in case you didn't believe that this was actually a hemangioma, here's the nodular peripheral enhancement pattern. So let's take a minute to talk about how hemangioma looks on diffusion-weighted imaging. So here's a typical abdominal MRI diffusion sequence where we have a B50, a B400, and B800 series. So what does that mean? So as the B value increases, the strength of diffusion increases. Also though, as the B value increases, the signal-to-noise ratio decreases. And that's why the B800 image is so fuzzy compared to the more sharply defined B50 image. Finally, as the B value goes up, the strength of T2 weighting decreases. So that means lesions that are T2 bright will be bright on the B50 series, like this hemangioma here, which tends to be bright. But then as the B value goes up, it becomes dark. And CSF and other fluid containing structures that do not restrict diffusion will usually become dark on B800. We also get the ADC sequence because that's independent of T2 weighting, and lesions that restrict diffusion will tend to be dark on ADC, and those that don't will be bright. So this is a typical hemangioma in this case, which does not restrict diffusion. It's bright on the low B value image and bright on ADC. Of course, though, nothing is absolute in radiology, and you may occasionally see hemangiomas that do restrict diffusion due to the presence of slow blood flow within the lesion. You shouldn't see really severe diffuse restricted diffusion, but you might see small areas of mixed restricted diffusion within a hemangioma. Just something to be aware of. Now, the enhancement patterns of hemangioma on MRI are the same as on CT scan, but we can usually better evaluate that pattern because we have more post-contrast sequences and usually with a later delay. So here's a non-contrast image showing the right hepatic hemangioma, T1 fat suppressed. Then it's starting to fill in on the hepatic arterial phase, continuing to fill in on portal venous phase, and on the delayed equilibrium phases, we see homogeneous delayed enhancement. Classic for hemangioma, highly specific. Here's just another example showing real-time enhancement. Again, you see this markedly T2 hyperintense hemangioma relative to the spleen, and it's showing that gradual centripetal peripheral nodular interrupted enhancement, this puddling that just continues to fill in. Now, I want to highlight again that point of the hemangioma showing persistent delayed homogeneous enhancement. And if we just start by looking at the delayed phase MRI image here on post-contrast, this is a five-minute delay, you see this homogeneously enhancing mass in the right lobe. And if we look back at the T2 fat suppressed image, it's homogeneously bright, it's brighter than the spleen. So just these two features alone, markedly T2 hyperintense with persistent delayed enhancement, that's very likely a hemangioma. If we also look at the T1 image, you can again see it's hypointense, isointense to the blood pool. And then if we look at the earlier pre-contrast imaging, then you see that peripheral nodular enhancement with gradual centripetal progression. But at this point, that's really just icing on the cake. You've already kind of made the diagnosis. So just that's really important that there is the persistent delayed enhancement and it's homogeneously T2 bright relative to the spleen. All right, so that second pattern we talked about before, the flash filling or capillary hemangioma, looks similar on MRI. So here's a T1 fat suppressed image showing the T1 hypointense hemangioma, and then it's immediately filling diffusely on this hepatic arterial phase series. You can see the aorta is very bright and we have this arsiform enhancement pattern of the spleen. And the hepatic veins are not yet enhancing, confirming that this is a hepatic arterial phase series. Here's the same lesion again, and if we look at the delayed phase series, you can see that it is still enhancing. It has that persistent delayed enhancement typical for hemangioma, and it's also T2 bright relative to the spleen. And there's the CT scan showing the same findings of the homogeneous enhancement. So this is a typical flash filling hemangioma. Now here's a different example of MRI showing three different hemangiomas, all with slightly different enhancement characteristics. 
And it also shows the power of MRI and specifically making the diagnosis of hemangioma. So let's start with this lesion in the middle. On this hepatic arterial phase image, it's showing diffuse immediate enhancement that persists on delayed post-contrast imaging. And it's also T2 bright on the T2 fat suppressed series, brighter than the spleen. This is typical for a flash filling hemangioma. Now, what about this weird subcapsular geographic enhancement on the hepatic arterial phase image? Well, if we look at the delayed image, you can see that there's a smaller lesion that has this persistent enhancement, and that lesion directly corresponds to the configuration of the lesion here on this T2 image, and that's also brighter than the spleen. So this is another flash-filling hemangioma, but it's a high-flow hemangioma with probable shunting around it, causing this transient hepatic enhancement difference on the hepatic arterial phase image. Now, you don't want to call this washout, because washout again means that a lesion is becoming darker than the surrounding liver parenchyma. This is just becoming iso-intense to the liver. That's not washout. And then finally, in the posterior right lobe, we have this mass demonstrating peripheral nodular enhancement that is more homogeneous on delayed phase imaging. Also, T2 bright relative to the spleen. That's just a typical centripetally enhancing hemangioma that we've been talking about. So again, MRI is extremely specific in the diagnosis of hemangioma. Now let's talk about that third enhancement pattern. So here's a hemangioma on T1 and T2 weighted images. It's very large. And you can see that within it, there's a central scar. It's T1 dark and T2 bright relative to the remaining hemangioma. So the central scar in these larger hemangiomas should be T1 dark and T2 bright. And the way you can still identify this as a hemangioma compared to other tumors is the surrounding aspect of the hemangioma will remain homogeneous, particularly on T2-weighted images. Look at how homogeneously T2 bright the surrounding tumor is. Now, since we're talking about central scars, are there other liver masses that can have a central scar? Well, FNH is the one we think of most commonly. Uh, large hemangiomas can. Fibrolamellar hepatocellular carcinoma, which is extremely uncommon. Cholangiocarcinoma may have a scar, and then run-of-the-mill hepatocellular carcinoma could also have a central scar. But one word of advice, you should not uh, come up with a differential diagnosis based on the presence of a central scar. You should instead use that scar to kind of refine your initial diagnosis, because all of these lesions will occur in patients with different risk factors and gender and age. And for bonus points, what Disney movie has a central scar? Yes, The Lion King. Get it, central character, scar? All right. So just like on CT, these central scars are typically non-enhancing. So here's that same patient with the post-contrast series, hepatic arterial phase, showing that peripheral nodular puddling progressing centripetally on the portal venous phase series, continuing on the delayed phase series, but notice that the central scar remains non-enhancing. It's T1 hypo-intense. And the correlative CT scan that this patient also had shows that that central scar is non-enhancing. All right, so just to summarize the appearance of hemangioma on CT and MRI, that interrupted peripheral nodular enhancement pattern is extremely useful, but you should really also focus on the presence of that non-contrast isodensity to blood pool on CT and non-contrast MRI T1 isointensity to blood pool, as well as the T2 hyperintensity relative to the spleen. That's a key feature. And again, the persistent homogeneous enhancement on the delayed phase imaging. All right, so let's finish up with the appearance of hemangioma on ultrasound. So hemangiomas are usually echogenic and homogeneous, as in this case where we have a right hepatic hemangioma, diffusely homogeneously hyperechoic, and it has slightly lobulated margins. Another pattern often seen is this one, where we have a reverse target appearance. And in that case, the hemangioma will have an echogenic periphery and a hypoechoic to isoechoic center. This is seen in about 40% of hemangiomas. And on color Doppler imaging, there's usually no flow. It's usually non-detectable because these are often avascular and ultrasound. And here's a case. This is a patient with a large heterogeneous mass in the right lobe. It's echogenic with central hypoechogenicity. And if we had color Doppler imaging, there's no real flow, but we do see, again, that central scar, that hypoechoic region. So in a young female, you might think about focal nodular hyperplasia, but this was actually another hemangioma. And just like on CT and MRI, these large hemangiomas can have central scars on ultrasound and mimic focal nodular hyperplasia or other masses. Here's the correlative MRI showing that typical hemangioma enhancement pattern. So here's another example of that reverse target appearance of hemangioma. Again, that's peripherally echogenic and centrally isoechoic or hypoechoic. And sometimes hemangiomas can be a little heterogeneous as well. So just be aware this reverse target appearance is not specific for hemangioma. There have been case reports of it described with cirrhotic nodules and also benign multifocal nodular steatosis. Rarely you can even see it in malignancy. Also, if we apply color Doppler flow in this patient, we do see some peripheral flow in this hemangioma. Again, color Doppler flow is usually non-detectable in hemangiomas, but you may occasionally see this nonspecific vascular flow. 
So don't let that dissuade you from a diagnosis of hemangioma. All right, that's it for Imaging of Hepatic Hemangioma Part 1. In Part 2, I'll talk about atypical hemangiomas and also mimics you really don't want to confuse with hemangioma like intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma and other malignant lesions. Hey, if you enjoyed this lecture, you could subscribe to Radiologist Headquarters on Apple Podcasts and YouTube. It would be awesome if you shared these lectures, even with just one person. Visit us at radiologisthq.com for additional info and to follow us on social media to get updates. Thanks and have a great day.